Now for more on the ongoing demonstrations against President Omar al-Bashir, Sudanese-American human rights advocate Azaz El-Shami joins me in the studio. Azaz, welcome for the first time on sure. Africa 54. Thanks for having me. Now, what started as protests demanding, uh, you know, uh, uh, just for the price hike for bread, are now protests demanding the ouster of President Bashir. How serious are these protests? Are we likely to see a regime change? They're quite serious because the uh, bread prices and increasing prices, that was just the iceberg. That was just a manifestation of really ill uh, economic uh, uh, policies and political decisions on the part of the government that led to that point. And when we're talking about price, uh, price increase, there were even scarcity. Not only just it's expensive, it's not even available. Uh, leading up to these protests, you would see many, many photos of people like in long lines for bread or for fuel. Uh, what exaggerated also that they could not even have access to their own money in banks. So basically, f people felt that they have no options. Not only it's expensive, mm -hmm. I don't even have my money to em buy bread. Emotions were already boiling. Exactly. And now, should Bashir be worried that this might be the end of his 30-year rule? He should be worried, uh, but the thing is, like, he's in denial, what it seems to me, because at this point and at this rate of participation, uh, you pretty much I'm not sure who left in their houses. Everybody is out. And you have today, it was really interesting to see photos from women from a very affluent part of Khartoum, Kafuri, where he lives himself. They're actually out on the street protesting. So it be, it's, it's expanding to include more people, more ordinary people who might be even uh, beneficiaries of the government, but they feel like they're taking the side of the people because of the brutality and the legitimacy of the quest. Like people are asking for legitimate things, like they need to have food, they need to have access to their money, they need to have fuel. The government had failed in, in conducting its job. Now Bashir has a warrant of arrest from the International uh, Criminal Court at The Hague and there might not even be any discussions about a post-Bashir presidency in Sudan. What would even a post-presidency look like if there were any discussions of that nature in the country? It depends who's discussing it. Uh, if you're talking about the government, of course, the uh, post-Bashir, if there is any, uh, because he seems to think that it's until death do his part. Uh, he doesn't want to uh, let go of it while he's alive. Most of the thing he, he insinuated that he will only give it to a military uh, power. So he doesn't think he will have any civilian um, transition of power. He would not do that. He said that in, in a couple of speeches. So maybe what he would offer is just kind of palace coup agreed upon palace coup that a military branch of the military will take over and that will give some bargain and some uh, way up for a Bashir. Now, a lot of people have been killed and this is continuing. I'm kind of even surprised that we, we're getting a lot of footage from Sudan because there's censorship of the media as well. Uh, I, you are a journalist also, yeah. you, you have that background. What do you make of this and uh, how likely are we to see even more coming out of Sudan. You will see much more. Um, it's it's this is the blessing of the technology. Everybody with the phone, they will take photos and they will send it. In the early days of the protest, the government throttled with the internet, making it slow. Some internet provider decided to make the internet very slow for social media platforms. But the user of the citizen journalists in Sudan, they knew that. And more and more you will see very, very good quality videos and footages that are coming out of Sudan that me and I'm, part, I'm a part of a consortium of independent media, human rights defenders, and citizen journalists where we're having all this information into something called Sudan Archive, where we're trying to streamline it because it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like today since I came, I got at least 22 videos right. of people. Like some of them are... To 20 seconds to one minute, and they're all like critical. Right. They're really making sure that they document uh, human rights yeah. violation. They're making sure that they document the masses, the number, the 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 scale of it. So they're really having a production line on the ground. Azaz, you know? thank you so much for Thanks your for insight into what's going on in Sudan. We'll bring you right again to the studio soon. Thank you Hopefully so much. Hopefully on a happy note. Yes, thank Azaz you. El Shami is a Sudanese American human rights advocate.